Hello and welcome back to Small Talk. We've got a great episode ahead as we speak with a men's basketball pair from Otterbein. I'm your host, Katie Mucci. Each week on the show, we highlight the past and present of Division Three, with both current and former student athletes joining to talk about their experiences, their favorite on-campus spots, the craziest road trip stories, and more. This week, we're chatting with a former national champion and Division Three Player of the Year, Jeff Gibbs, and current men's basketball student athlete, Cam Evans. We talk about Jeff's 20-year professional career, their favorite stories from the team, why they love D3, and more. Thanks for joining this week. Now it's time for some small talk. Hi, my name is Cam Evans. I'm a senior here currently on the Otterbein men's basketball team. Hi, I'm Jeff Gibbs. I'm a former member of the basketball team at Otterbein College, which is now at Otterbein University. So, well, thank you both for joining us today. I am so happy to have you on here. Uh, before we got started talking, I talked about the time difference, but um, Jeff, I'll have you follow up really quick on that. So we have you guys recording at Weird Hours. And Jeff, yeah. I, I hear you doing some pretty cool stuff still. You're in, you're across the world right now. What What's going on with you? Yeah, right now I am in my 20th professional basketball season uh, here in Japan. Uh, right now it is Wednesday morning, uh, 10.04 in the morning on Wednesday. Um, yeah, I mean, this is my, pretty much my last, uh, season. I'm going to retire after this year, uh, playing basketball. Just it's time. Uh, I need to be home with my kids and just, I just, honestly, the game has done a lot for me. So I just, it's time for me to just call it quits. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on retirement. 20 years is incredible. Um, is your family in Japan with you or are they back here in the States? My son, uh, who's a freshman right now in college, uh, he's here with me. He's taking online classes at Columbus State uh, Community College. And my wife and three other kids are still back home in Westerville. Um, that's awesome. Well, congratulations on a great career. Uh, uh, so what what point in the season are you all in right now? Uh, it's the beginning of the season right now. Um, so my situation was a little bit different this year. Um, I started off as a support coach for another team, uh, but I still wanted to play. And so I. Uh, um, another import player got injured. So I, I'm right now I'm just filling in on a short-term contract right now for him. So hopefully, luckily enough, I might stick it out for the rest of the season because his injury is pretty uh, severe. So they might pick me up for the rest of the season. Very cool. Well, that's awesome. Um, so now we got all the background info in here. It is Tuesday night on our end of this. So we're a little bit earlier. It is, I had some trick-or-treaters earlier um it's been it's halloween so a little bit of fun but um let's get to the topic of this podcast which is kind of bringing together current and former student athletes in division three talking about your experiences um and how maybe things have changed from one one generation to the next so um cam i'll have you start out with this and then jeff if you want to follow up and tell me what's changed or what hasn't changed so cam let's talk about on-campus life what are some of the spots you and your teammates are hanging out Um, Is it the student center, a quad, or are you guys going off campus to local coffee shop or things like that? Like, what are the places you you guys are hanging out on your off time? Uh, Yeah, I would say some of the main places that we hang out are places like the campus center, or since I'm a senior here on the team, I do have my own apartment on campus. So I would say that's a big hangout spot too. With the campus center, they have the cafeteria up top with some pool tables and stuff on the first floor. And they also have what's called the den where they serve pizza late at night. So we can all go in there and just hang out pretty much at all different types of the day. So that's really nice for us. And also with my apartment, a lot of the guys just come over. We watch a lot of football, watch a lot of basketball and just do some like team bonding and stuff like that. Um, But other than that, we sometimes go to the library and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Almost the same thing for us uh, when I was uh, back in 2002. That's the year I graduated. It's 2002, uh, which is my senior year, which I had a, also an apartment uh, on campus. Well, we stayed in the commons. Um, so, but most of our hangout spots was either, I don't know if you still have the roost, which is probably the den now. I don't know. I haven't been on campus in Yeah, a while. I think that's the same thing. Okay, yeah, we used to hang around there, uh, but most of the time we were just at one of the guys' apartments. Uh, a lot of the guys, it was just only me and another senior, Kevin Shea. 
that where we both had our own apartments, um, stayed in the commons. Uh, we had a very young team my senior year. So they used to come over, hang out, uh, basically do the same thing. Um, off campus, we really didn't really go off campus that much. Just times were different back then, I guess. Awesome. Well, speaking of off campus, so maybe not in town, but when you're going off campus to travel, you're hitting the road for your games. Um, I've talked to a lot of people on this podcast so far, and as we know, D3 is somewhat regional, so you're probably not getting a flight to every game you go to, but maybe every now and then, especially if you're a national champion, like like Jeff is, um, you might hopefully got a flight. I don't know where that national championship was located at, but hopefully you got some fun trips there now. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. No, we basically my, out of my four years, we only flew one time, and that was my wow. freshman year, Florida, um, to oh, Tampa. But all the other, even our out of state um, games that we had pre uh, before the OSC got started, we started in um, we we drove the bus. Okay, so you guys did, you guys got a bus that you were in like fifteen passenger vans. Well, we had we had the Oak Club bus, which was a pretty big bus. I don't know if you guys okay. got the same bus or not. Yeah, so what we travel in is kind of like a charter bus. I'm sure it's like kind of similar. Um, it has seats that like kind of recline back a little bit. It has a bathroom on the bus and stuff like that. And we also have um, the Otterbein vans, which we use for like really close travel, maybe like Ohio Wesleyan, which is like 15 to 20 minutes away. We use those for like close transportation but other than that we mainly use the charter bus yeah yeah no we i think we had the old club bus which was i think is it was an older bus i know they used it back in i think the 80s also 80s and 90s so i mean i obviously had a bathroom and then in the back part of the bus was that's where the coaches sat i had like a different door you can go back in there and that's where they, they had a little couch around the um their seating was a couch area so yeah, ours didn't. We didn't. Our buses, our seats didn't recline as much. So yeah, you got. We were pretty cramped. We, we might have a couple more upgrades than what you guys had back in the day. <laughs> awesome. Um, when you guys are on those trips, maybe close, maybe far, um, do you get to go to any really cool places or do any fun touristy things during those times? Um, Jeff, you could start that one out. Um. No, I mean, well, when we went to the out of state um, games, so my, I want to say my sophomore year, I can't remember the year, but so the men's and the women's team went to San Antonio. So we all rented a big bus and we had a bonding experience there. The, uh, the men and the women's team rode the same bus, the coaches were on the bus. So we had a good time that year. Uh, we went to a couple of places, the Alamo. Um, and just walked around uh, San Antonio. Um, but other than that, um, no, not really. Other, well, yeah, my freshman year, we went to the Bush Gardens. I actually went to the beach and to the um, the amusement park there. Uh, we had a good time that year. But other than that, then my freshman year, sophomore year, we didn't really go to any um, touristy places. Okay, I just did a quick Google. That was a 19-hour and 30-minute drive down to San Antonio from Otterbein. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right yeah let's just say i mean we, it was a big bus like a, one yeah. of those really harder <laughs> bus um yeah it was i mean we had we had we had a fun time on the bus i mean obviously some people uh bought cards um play some cards and stuff like that just people read but yeah i mean it was a fun time that trip best trips are usually the best memories um yeah. cam what about you during your time any fun experiences you guys got to go on as a team um, we haven't done any crazy long drives like San Antonio or anything like that. And, um, we haven't really done anything touristy for real either. Normally when we go, uh, we normally just go and get ready for the game. And then after the game, we're trying to make it back. That's fair. Got to make it back to class. Um, speaking of class, let's talk about some academics. Jeff, what was your major when you were in school? Uh, health and physical education. I'm pretty sure they don't have that major now. <laughs> but yeah, it was health and physical education. Okay, Cam, what about you? Uh, I'm an allied health major, which is basically uh, like exercise science. 
Okay, so maybe similar. Do you know if you have any professors you've taken these days that might have been around in back in 2000, 2002 when Jeff was there? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I can't, I can't say that I'm positive or not about that. I don't think so, though. Uh, was did you ever have Joan Rocks as a professor? Oh yeah, I I, I have Joan Rocks as uh, one of the higher ups in my department. Actually, she I think helped create the Allied Health program. Yeah, so she was there when I was there. She's been there forever. Uh, she was one of my professors uh, when I was there on uh, in college. Awesome, awesome. Well, Cam, since you're in the thick of it, uh, what is maybe your favorite class or professor you you've taken so far? Um, I would say my favorite class is that I've taken in the past was strength and conditioning with um, Professor Joe. He he taught us a lot about like weightlifting and how to make different programs for athletes. And being an athlete myself, I feel like I kind of connected to that class really well. And I kind of took some tips and tricks that I learned in the class and kind of like applied it to how I'm going through the season and lifting and stretching and things like that. So I would say that was one of my favorite classes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, now let's get to some story time. So the first one I'm going to have you tell me, each of you, is your funniest or craziest, but appropriate for this podcast story. Um, and Jeff, I'll let you kick this one off. Now, this have to do with basketball or just any story in general? Because I have two stories that's from is kind of mm, a little bit funny. I think you can tell me whatever, and we'll we'll see what makes the cut on the podcast. <laughs> okay. One, I'm in class. Obviously, I played football also at Otterbein, so it was an astronomy class I had. Uh, I had a bunch of my football players in there also. Um, so we're first in the class for some reason. I not too proudly this. I fell asleep in class, and so I have my one of my football teammates who happened to be my cousin who sat right next to me in class. So class was over. Everyone cleared out already. And some um, it was a so it was a it was one of the halls. I forgot what the name of the hall, but I was in the big auditorium. Um, and some girl tapped me on the shoulder. I wake up. She said, um, class is over. I think she was a TA. Uh, class is over. So I looked up. Everyone's already gone. And so I looked my cousin, Lily, who sat right next to me. And I don't know. I like I wish I could remember the name of the hall. Uh, where the classroom was because you had to literally walk in front of me to get out because I sat on the end. A lot of people walked right in front of me, didn't tap me, didn't wake me up or anything like that. So I'm look, I woke up like, okay, class is over. Great. And so I had another funny story. So another story, like I said, it wasn't too funny. It might've been funny, but just me waking up, everyone's already gone. That's for me. In the market. I get to the campus center for lunch because it was right before lunch. I get to the campus room for lunch, and then three of my teammates was in there laughing at me as soon as I walked into the ca cafeteria. So the second story that I have here, I can't mention the guy. He was a basketball player. I'm going to leave this his name uh, out. But So we're in a, the locker room just joking around, and I don't know how the story got started, but we were talking about whatever some, something ever happened to you, and he said that, he almost drowned in the shower. Now, out of all of us thinking there's no possible way that you can drown in the shower, just coming up with all different scenarios, like you're in the shower standing up. So he said that we're, all of us is uh, standing around like, so did you reach down, plug the um, the drain and hold your nose and put your mouth open and for the shower to come keep coming down. So it's still a running joke to this day. So one day we um, came into the, somebody came into the locker room and bought him some water wings. Just so whenever you take a bath or a shower or whatever, something like that, that he won't drown anything like that. But just a funny story that he just, he came up with that he can drown, that he almost drowned in the shower, which is no possible way. I said, it's the, is a lot of my teammates they're they can tell the joke a little bit more funnier than what how I just explained it right there but like I say it's still a running joke to this to, to this day in, in our group chat that we have that's great so you get him water rings but your cousin doesn't get presents anymore right he no. let you sleep there <laughs> no. I, like I said he he literally had to walk right past me to get out the classroom 
Oh man. Yeah, no more birthday presents for that cousin. Yeah, no. Um, Cam, what about you? What's your funniest, craziest story? Um, I don't know if I have really a crazy story, but a funny memory that I have here from Otterbein, um, I think it was maybe last year. Um, it was kind of around this time too, around Halloween time. Um, coach normally has us have practice on the weekend sometime, like in the morning, early morning, like six, seven, eight a.m. And it was around Halloween time, and I remember coach always likes to get into the gym like before anybody because for some reason he likes you to know that he's like outworking you even though that he's the coach and so coach must have got here early and he had one of our um assistants on the staff set up like a little camera as you were walking in the door to get into the gym and somebody dressed up in like a halloween costume and it was early in the morning so dudes are dragging coming in the door and they're just getting scared as they walk into the door. Like first step, somebody's jumping out in a Halloween costume early in the morning and they're getting it all on video and they like made it all into one long video. And I think they posted on Twitter or something. So that was like a, a funny Halloween um, memory that I have with coach trying to scare the players as they're coming in early in the morning. It's very timely for today. Um. So those were your funny stories. Let's talk about your favorite memories. I'm sure during your playing time, there has been many while you were on the Otterbein team. Um, Cam, I'll let you continue. What maybe was your favorite memory during your time so far? Okay, so I'd say my favorite memory on the team is when we were playing at Capitol. I, I honestly can't remember if this was last year too, but we were playing on the road at Capitol against our rival. And it has always been a struggle for us to to win a war, especially after uh, Jeff's class had gone away. And after those years, Otterbein had men's basketball had kind of struggled for a little bit. So we were fighting for the or, and we ended up winning that game at Capitol, which was huge for us. And I just remember we're coming off of the floor and all of our fans had come because we had we have a great student section and a student like fan base. And so all the students came out to – to Capitol and we're about to walk into the locker room and we get the oar and we like kind of look over and one of my teammates, Dallas, he, he looks over at uh, all of our fans that came to the game. They're like on the court and he looks over at coach and he looks over at the fans and coach is like, go ahead and go over. So we go over there and we start jumping with the oar with the fans and everybody's kind of like celebrating together on Capitol's floor. And that was one of my favorite memories um, being on the basketball team. Just that joy that we felt, that camaraderie that we all had, seeing it kind of finally all pay off and being able to celebrate with all my classmates with being there. That was really cool. That's really great. I am I love that you said that because I read your bio as we were going into this and I saw in your bio online, you've hit a couple buzzer beaters to win some games. So for it not to be you hitting a shot at the buzzer, but to be something with your team and your classmates, that's awesome. Mm. I love that. All right, Jeff, what about you? You won a national championship. You were a D3 player of the year. You got a couple things, maybe. Yeah, I mean, mine was obviously was winning the national championship. Well, winning the player of the year twice at the conference and winning the national championship. Um, like I said, that moment, um, because my senior year, we were picked to finish sixth in the conference. Two seniors, um, a bunch of freshmen and sophomores, no juniors. So we had a very young group. Um, just going through the season, winning every – like, winning all the games. Obviously, we went 30-3 and three that year, but the the three losses we took, two were by one point. And the other one, I wasn't there because I was playing in the All-American game, football game, uh, and, um, that year, and we got beat by Mount Union by – I thought it was a misprint in the internet when I read. It was, like, 106-59. to 59. And the other two losses were just literally by one point. And so – but – the, the best moment, obviously, was when the clock ran the double zeros uh, in Salem uh, for the national championship game against Elizabethtown. That's awesome. Those are all of my more on the field, on the court questions. So now I'm going to ask you some D3 questions. Um, as I mentioned before we hopped on the recording, this podcast or, is part of our 50th anniversary of Division Three celebration. Um, so we're talking, like I said, to the current and the former generation of D3 student athletes to see really what this is, whole experience has been like and 
how things compare. Um, so first off, I want to hear from each of you what it means to you to be or to have been a D3 student athlete um, and maybe what that's meant for your career in your future. So that being said, Jeff, I'll have you start that one off for us. Okay, I'm going to give a little backstory first. So uh, originally I had signed a Division II football scholarship to a school, Fort Valley State in Georgia. So obviously my life wouldn't have been the same way it was if I hadn't left there and came to Otterbein. So I'm gratefully uh, appreciative to Otterbein and all Div Division III uh, sports. Um, but no, being a D3 athlete, um, it means a lot. Obviously it allowed me to play both football and basketball in college, uh, which is something I wanted to do. Um, just and just the life. Uh, it's a smaller atmosphere, which is something that I liked. Obviously, it allowed me to meet my wife, and you know, wouldn't have my kids today. But just, I mean, I'm very. I don't think I would have had the same success for me if I would have went to if I'd have stayed at Division Two school. Just obviously, I was the. Hmm, trying with the word I'm looking for here is, is I'm I'm very fortunate pretty much I'm very fortunate to be at Otterbein just because the life and just the at, um the athletics department I, people don't understand that even though we're not on scholarship or getting paid um it's still hard and it's still like it's still sports Pretty much. I know a lot of people look down on Division Three, um, but for me, obviously now for today's generation, it's a lot better. Obviously, you got a lot of Division Three schools playing Division One schools um, in all sports and obviously been hanging in there tough. But for me, I'm just happy to just to be part of Division Three and just everything about it. Sorry, I kind of rambled on about there. I just I get I just. I show a lot of love for Division Three that I just get, you know, confused. And I mean, not confused, just I don't know really what I, what I want to say about Division Three because I have so much passion about it just because I came from there. I love that. Tam, what about you? What has your D3 experience meant to you? Um, I would say a lot of the same. I'm very thankful um, to be a Division Three athlete. Uh, I think that I get a great opportunity with things like smaller class class sizes. So I can connect a lot with my professors and especially on division on a division three level, there's a lot of people willing to help you if you reach out and um, something that really uh, helped make the de decision for me to come to division three was something like a small coaching staff and kind of like that, that small campus feel. Um, I have a great connection with my coaches and being on a smaller campus, I feel like, especially with athletics, all of the athletic teams kind of like huddle around each other and everybody kind of wants everybody to succeed and have the same goal. And there's kind of like a family aspect around that. Like we as the basketball team go and support baseball, football, and uh, like the soccer teams. And when it comes around to be winter time, like they all pull up to the basketball games and we have really good student attendance and things like that. So I think that, that opportunity is something that I'm really grateful for about being a division three athlete. Awesome. Last question for both of you is um, like we said, it's the 50th anniversary. So we're 50 years down many more years of division three to come. Um, so what do you see, or maybe what do you hope to see for the future of division three and can, I'm going to stick with you for that one first. Hmm. For Division Three, I hope that I continue to see a lot of growth. And um, like Jeff said, that there used to be kind of a um, like stigma about going Division Three. Um, I'm not really sure like what that is about the athletics or maybe because the academics are always really good. But I hope to see a lot of growth with Division Three. I know that with teams playing exhibition games against Division One schools and um, social media helps a lot with getting highlights out and like cool things that division three does to try and get more recruits. Um, but I just hope to see a lot more growth in division three, especially in athletics and things like facilities and stuff like that. I think that, um, there's a lot of room to grow for division three in those areas. Okay. And Jeff. 
Yeah, uh, I agree uh, with Cam. Yeah. Um, all I'm just about growth. I just hope that it does come um, a lot more athletes will – student athletes want to come to division three. I know a lot of the basketball players, they want to get scholarships. They want like, you can be the best player on the team, but you will want to sit at a higher up program rather than come to a division three and play right away. They just think the division three uh, sports isn't where to be at right now, but a lot of good athletes has come from division three. I think it, after look at my story, division three, playing professional basketball longer than some of these guys who play division one basketball. And so my thing is I always tell athletes, just go where you're wanted. Like obviously if the division three, if the division three school wants you go there, obviously they want you for a reason. Great. Go where you want it is a great way to put it. Um, well, thank you both so much for joining me today. Like I said, one early morning, one late night. I appreciate you guys hopping on here from two opposite sides of the world. Uh, to talk. This has been a great conversation. I've really enjoyed chatting. Um, Cam, well, both of you guys, you're both about to start seasons or starting a season. So best of luck to both of you in your seasons. Uh, Cam, I know you're getting started next week, so I will be cheering you on. You're my first basketball interview on the podcast this year. So I think that means you're the team I have to cheer for this year. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much, Jeff. Good luck this season and congrats on the retirement. Thank you. To everyone listening, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Small Talk. We post new episodes every Thursday. To follow along with everything Division 3, you can find us on social media at NCAAD3 or NCAADIII. Make sure to join the conversation with us all year long by using the hashtag DIII50. Have a great day, and we'll see you for some more Small Talk next week.